All right, everyone. Let's mosey. Taste my bonus face. Hello and welcome to another Taste My Bonus Face episode for E3 2019. I'm your host, Adam Heath, joined today by Joseph Knight. Hello. And this is one where we're going to be talking about the Square Enix conference that happened, that happens once in a blue moon, it seems. Every now and then they're like, we'll do a conference. It's getting more regular. Yeah. Last year they did like a direct thing. Yeah, with Keith David. Yeah. And then the year, I think it was like a few years before that, or... One or two years before that, they did like a a very awkward press conference. Yeah, that, that went just, really badly, didn't yeah, it? So, so probably their best presentation. Yeah, like I think that, like, I mean, we'll get into it, but like, I think with what they were bringing, they like they they kind of had it in the pocket, you know, like they just knew <laughs> that it was like, you know, it was like, okay, look. I, I, or not even we can fuck this up. <laughs> like I, I do also wonder if, like, presentation wise, maybe Marvel helped to make well, I sure. Mean, we that, can t- I mean, but like, yeah, we'll get we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get, get to that. We'll get some stuff. of that presentation I thought was weird and <laughs> stupid and gross. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> made me feel ill. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, but they opened up with uh, Final Fantasy VII remake. Of course, information. Well, like with, the, the, just the end of the tease, yeah, is what happened. We finally we actually finally got some information. It. Yeah, it's like you know, like because up until this point, it's been watch some gameplay footage, and it's like Cloud trying to go sideways through a crack in a wall or something. <laughs> when you're like, really? Well, we saw this something. Your- there was another th- trailer. Not too long ago, wasn't there? That showed like a bit of something, but not really that yeah, much just, more. Yeah, like it just wasn't. It still wasn't really that clear on exactly what it was. But apparently, the 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 night before this conference was, or not too long before, there was a Final Fantasy Symphony event that happened, and they sh- that's where they actually showed gameplay trailer properly for the first time. And this was just a longer version of what they saw there, and that that's where they actually announced the release date at first. It wasn't okay. here. But yeah, we as saying we got actually a, like a proper demonstration of how the combat systems kind of work with like a mashup of real time combat and what was the the phrase they use ATB ATB that's yeah. it yeah so active time battle yeah and with essentially by hitting things you build up your ATB meter I think which so- gives you special like your abilities. And so I either. think your ATB meter is always increasing. They but said to hit thing. it, it speeds it up. Oh, okay. Right, because that, like that, like the ATB meter is um that would be in the classic like turn based battles that that would be um your waiting time right. before you could do another attack. Yeah, and it's interesting because it's to me it seems like. And this is the thing I was really worried about, actually, like about turning it into a, you know, action game. Like what it seems that they've done is like rip apart Final Fantasy seven as a like, you know, all of its systems Mm. and kind of rearranged it. Like I was thinking that there'd be like slash abandon this, abandon that. You know, like just you know, like just make sure the fighting looks good. Yeah, like that's been kind of what Square have been doing. Yeah, they've definitely gone far more action based with all their main systems for yeah. Final Fantasy. But like, this is <clears throat> way more complicated than mm. Final Fantasy um, fifteen, for example. Like, you know, like the amount of stuff that's going on, the customization of your characters. You know, and it, you know, it carries a lot of like cultural weight obviously so obviously they made that conscious decision that they can't not do anything yeah. there's no, there's they have to do everything they have to replicate everything yeah but it's it's cool that they've designed a system that does kind of work as both where yeah you can assign abilities to hotkeys or you can freeze and go through stuff i'm assuming that because of how limited the hotkeys are that even if you're doing it that way every now and then you'll still have to like freeze the game to go into yeah. Also, like, like I imagine as the game <coughs> continues and, you know, like, as it starts to, like, intensify, you're going to have to start leaning on that freeze more. Yeah, even you know? just to, like, 
get your bearings in a fight and plan and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah, like switching between characters so you're in full in control. Yeah, they showed a part. Button. Yeah. They showed a party up to three at this point. I don't know if they're going to be going higher, but it's three in the original, isn't it? I thought I thought I saw a competition of four. Oh, was it? I'm not with... sure though. I don't want to like. Okay. I don't want to get. I don't want to get ahead of that. Like three or four. Like it, it <laughs> is it. three is the standard. Yeah. Yeah. No, but and I don't know how. Like you know, like I'd probably get a okay. bit messy. Yeah. I'm actually I'm curious to go back and look now. Um. Yeah. So they also said that they've essentially. What's the name of the city? Midgar. Midgar. So they've made the Midgar section of the game so big that it's just one game now and it's on two discs. Yeah. I mean, like, that's the stuff... I guess for me, that's the stuff that still is kind of scary. Yeah. You I know, can like, imagine. <laughs> so, like, because, like, Midgar is, like... maybe six hours on your first playthrough. Like if you're taking it like real slow. Yeah. Like, I mean, like when I play Final Fantasy seven now, like I can like bust through that in like three and a half. Like I like, I just know what I'm doing. Um, but, and like the, I guess the, but the scary thing is I haven't seen anything new. Yeah. It's still all been. Yeah. Like, I mean stuff. like even like the, even like some of, I mean like, I don't know. Do we want to like kind of structure this in how they revealed it? You know, and I go through what we did. So, like, but I think, so, like, to start out, it was the opening of Final Fantasy VII, the assault on the Mako reactor, and um, Cloud was jumping off the train, having his fight at the train station, going to do that, like, bomb the reactor mission. Hmm. And that played out really, like, like, kind of, similarly but there was some extra stuff like there was a there was like a train station with turnstiles and like an actual kind of like lived in space like that didn't exist in it final. did look like they were expanding it more in making the city a living city so yeah. you're not necessarily just going to be like turn up here then boom next part of the mission next part of the mission yeah. that you will have to travel around a bit more yeah and like i'm down for that like mm. making it feel like like i mean Miga needs to feel like a city yeah yeah, no, like, and it'll be better for me good to feel like a city and less like a backdrop. And also the weight of the story will mean, like, if you spend more time in Mika, like, obviously I know what happens in Final Fantasy VII, that will be, that can, that will probably pay off, like, later. Yeah. But watching that, you, they, they ran through that pretty much all the way through to and including the God Scorpion boss fight, who mm. now I believe is called Sentinel Scorpion. Okay. They seem to say, say at the bomb. See, like, I'm one of them guys. I was like, oh, look, it's Guard Scorpion. And I was like, what's Sentinel Scorpion all about? <laughs> I'm not sure I like that change. Like, I'm like that. I was, I was being that guy. Um, but then they, but then they showed this boss fight, mm. right? And wow, like, it looks really good. Like, a very much a, like, long, difficult, progressive slog of a battle like yeah. it was going on they had to keep cutting like time <laughs> out to kind of move the boss like along and that's what a good rpg fight mm. should be they're not like a they're not like a you know like uh they're not like a, a two minute thing they're meant to be like 15 <clears throat> minute battles These epic things yeah. having said that i did beat the adamantois in final fantasy 15 and that was literally just like being inside a glitch for like an hour and 10 minutes yeah repeatedly that's the, hitting something and that would be crap <laughs> that's the thing i think you do err on the unfortunate side of it just feeling like a grind when you have super long boss battles so if they can find a way to make the progression of the fight feel like it changes it up enough to feel different that's fine yeah and that's what i thought that was what i was kind of liking about it it seemed to be changing the the timbre of the fight over and over and over again it was like yeah one minute there's like you know you're just fighting the scorpion regular you hit him a bunch of times a bit of him blows off then hits the ceiling and then stuff starts falling down then he's using this big laser you're trying to hide behind the cover you know and then it did yeah. a, then it did a time jump and fucking everything was on fire <laughs> the, the like, spider tanks running around on the fucking <laughs> ceiling like it looks nuts I like the the actual the environment was changing. It wasn't even just moving through. It was like actually destroying the place as he's fighting. Yeah, and like you that know, cool. and like you know, for me, you know, it was just two dudes standing in a line waiting to hit it. <laughs> like that's like what that fight is to me. And it's and that fight, God Scorpion is iconic. Like, yeah. don't attack while his tail's up. 
is somewhat of a you know like it's it's like an ingrained thing you okay. know like like look if you say that to people like you know you might get like a nervous disappointed chuckle that someone realizes that they know what that is uh, as i said like the part of the fight that did make me just think of it like really was the fact that his weak point was his bum hole that was a bit weird Oh, you know, we've all got to have a weak point. I guess so. Did it have like, to be his bum hole? I can tell you right now, there are certain days where it's definitely my weak point. <laughs> Fair enough. I think we all have days like that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's interesting that like them saying that this one thing that was five hours of the original game is now an unknown amount of time in a yeah, massive RPG. Yeah, that's the worry. The, I, the like, unknown... Yeah, but it's weird. That makes me actually more interested to play the original. Because of yeah. it being a lot different. Like, if it was the same but just prettier and a different combat system, I'd be like, it's fine, I'll just play the new one and I don't yeah. need to play the old one. But it being this different makes me kind of want to have a baseline for what it was to know what the differences are. So that might be well, something I end up doing yeah, in the next Yeah, like a voice. Year. A voice. Get yourself the downloadable copy on PlayStation 4 because it's got double speed. Okay. And so when you get into these bits, which is just you running around a dungeon, you can just crack down, crank that up to speed times two, run through that, and you and you don't have to deal with the bad stuff okay. that comes hand in hand with, you know, you know, being a grown man, JRPGs, we don't always have the time for that. No. <laughs> and this, like, kind of intravenous speed delivery system that Squaresoft have mastered for all of their remakes... He's bloody brilliant. <laughs> like it's a good idea, you know. Have all those fond memories again, except you know, not along. And the chaff is like you know, twice as short. Yeah, well, yeah. I'd say it's definitely possible. But yeah, like the only other game that I know of that's on PlayStation that's got two discs is Red Dead Redemption. Okay, two, and that was even like one disc was just a data disc that you just installed, and then the other disc you played off. Yeah, so what so, I don't understand is whether or not they said that they'd split the game into two. They said this is this two is discs. two discs. Yeah. Okay. We don't. They yet don't know how many parts this game is going to be. In okay. The end. They're you know figuring what, that out as they're going along. The other worry, though, is that like there's going to be like valve levels of waiting between shit. Possibly. I mean, if they've if they've got the mechanics down and they've got that element of it there already, that's a big chunk of designing a game, really, like actually getting it mechanically down. So if they're just making more chapters with the same style, I think it should it shouldn't take too much longer. Yeah, I mean, like if but, if me, I mean, let's say, because like, let's say the thing is, is I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, like, like how long do you think this is going to be? I, honestly, I don't know if I could ever even a guess at this point. So, like, like, I think we're going to be clocking in, like, and this I think is going to like disappoint Final Fantasy fans. I think that we might be looking at a twenty-five hours, possibly. Yeah, no, I mean, a, a very well polished, very well executed twenty-five hours, but twenty-five hours, and you know, like. Final Fantasy gamers are used to like dropping that cash for a hundred, you know, like yeah. and, you know, like I mean, I guess it's I've like... put like eighty into Final Fantasy fifteen. It's not even very good. And, <laughs> like, I, like and like Kingdom Hearts is pretty long. Like they're like, like I, I'm just worried. I'm worried that they're they're they've like looked at Mass Effect and gone, oh, we could do that, possibly, and like. I th I am wondering if the two discs is even like if they've got loads of really high quality cutscenes and that's what's taking up space because HD video is chunky. So if yeah. they've pre-rendered everything and it's all like full beautiful Blu-ray quality, like you got to remember a f a Blu-ray film takes up a full Blu-ray like twenty five so, gigs. So, so like I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this: Kingdom Hearts doesn't have multiple language options it's got japanese and english yeah nothing else because tetsuya nomura the creative director who is shared between both of these projects would not fucking back down over having compressed video so i would right. say that you're pretty on the money with yeah. that prediction yeah like that's that's exactly <laughs> his jam he's like no i'm not it's beautiful 
and is staying beautiful is definitely yeah. like his thing. And you so know, it'd be interesting if like one disc just has the game on it that's installed, and the one you put in is all the cutscenes. <laughs> and maybe to get that kind of retro stick is every time there's a cutscene, you put in the cutscene disc, take out the game disc. <laughs> That'd be a good around. little bit of yo-yoing going on there, like. Ah, oh, it'd be interesting. Bringing it back. Yeah. But yeah, so that's coming out next year, 3rd of March. Yep. In our very busy first yep. half of that year. <laughs> yeah, my mum's so, birthday. Won't be seeing her. Sorry, mum. <laughs> yeah, sorry, mum. <laughs> so maybe next year. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's, I think, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of information they went into. I think there's even more yeah. stuff that's coming out. So, I mean, because that's like the it's... thing is there's we saw, like, I mean, there's more there's more to unpack. Like, we saw other characters. They, like, you know, teased that whether or not we'd see, like, Tifa fight, you know, right at the start of the show. Yeah. And, like, you know, after a little bit of, a, like, a middle period and a little bit of chatting, they went, oh, actually, you know. Here you go. Like, have a deluge of stuff. And we saw a Tifa fight. We saw some new environments. We saw, like, the the bar that Tifa works in, the um, Avalanche's, like, resistance. Get some egg hate. and chips. Yeah, get, got some egg and chips on the, on the wall. You know, big up to the egg and chips. <laughs> Good thing, that, you know, like, Cloud, man after my own heart. Have some egg and chips. Uh, yeah, go, go have some egg and <laughs> chips. But like, um, and we saw like the way the fights dynamically move, um, which I thought was really cool. Like watching yeah. there was like a fight in a train where it was kind of like slipping between kind of, uh, you know, set piece and battle. And like that looked really cool, flitting between the three characters, setting up a combo with Cloud, then having like Tifa uppercut them. Like that looked like it was working really well. Then we saw Ares fight. So, like, yeah, it was, you know, I was, it's everything you would want, you know, as a final yeah. fantasy fan. And then there was, like, some really, like, I mean, there's, like, this boss in a sewer, like, in midway through the Midgar section. His name's Bottom Swell. And um, <laughs> he was definitely jamming out in the background at one point. They were fighting him like a big monster. Okay. Like, that was, and, like, you know, but that's what I mean. I've seen all, I, I know all of it. I didn't see anything new. They're holding it back, I guess. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, I'm, I'm one. I'd I'd be surprised if there's actually like extra stuff in that way. I I think it's just going to be that the the actual city is fleshed out and it's like an open world city that missions take place in. I have a feeling that's going to be a big vibe with it, with the way they've done that, it. But, that that did not bode well yeah. for Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, because that's actually <laughs> the thing. Like, if it's just like nothing busy work. And that is the bulk of this new game. Like, help the people of Midgar <laughs> by doing, like, take the thing to the place and then put the thing... Because the thing is, is Final Fantasy VII, like, never concerns itself with anything like that. Like, there's not mm. that... It's a Final Fantasy game. And that's the thing is, Final Fantasy has learned this bad habit from, like, the Skyrims of the world. You know, <laughs> like, pick up the thing, take the thing to the place. Like, you know, usually it's just go to the next town, the town's got a problem, deal with that problem. Like, that's, yeah. on a very basic level, that's generally how, that's the ebb and flow of a classic 90s era JRPG. You know, you're not like, you're not like just, you, you're not backtracking on yourself, really. Mm. It's like forward momentum all the time. Like, even in Migga in the original, it's like, you know, Cloud is on a very, like, linear path. You know, and the story is very deliberately that because it moves Cloud, you know, from one section of like the kind of underbelly of the city up to the affluent part and like right back down to the slums, then to like kind of like the kind of criminal district, you know, and he, but he has to go through that in a very linear way. And I don't know how much of how like and like that works very well. And I don't know if that's going to work so well if in the middle of that it's like go pick 16 flowers for Aries' grandma from the church. Like, that's just going like, <laughs> to piss me off. Well, and anyone, like, anyone who knows Final Fantasy VII will immediately know how I've put that, like, side quest together. Like... Okay. Well, yeah, we'll s just have to wait until March yeah. sooner, or if they do any more reviews. I'm excited, Alan. I'm excited, to I'm be honest. Excited. I'm excited, I'm I'm excited for you to get to play Final Fantasy VII. In the real one, yeah. in, in a month's time. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Hopefully that all comes together. Uh, then they kind of... There's a bunch of stuff here which just sort of felt like updates on things I think we already knew about. But Life is Strange Season 2 got a trailer. Yeah, was which was just... like, we're going to spoil Life is Strange Season 2, the bits of it that have come out, if you haven't played it. Yeah. Sorry. So Sorry. that happened. So Yeah, I know a bunch of stuff now that I didn't know before. Yeah. Oh, well. 
Thanks. Fuck me for waiting for it all to be done. I guess. <laughs> uh, there's Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles remaster. Was that a new announcement for this? No, Did that's been that? announced for a little while. Okay. Um, like it's the. I think the release date's been put back. They just said winter. Yeah, like, and this, I think uh, it had like I think it was meant to be out very soon. Okay. Um. So that was more like a disappointment. <laughs> um. <laughs> you know, but that's been part of their switch push. Okay. Yeah, no, like, because, so, like, Crystal Crystal Chronicles is, like, a four-player, multiplayer kind of, um, like, action hack and slash RPG, All you right. know, to play with your friends. Um, I've always wanted to play it, but to play it on the GameCube, you not only did you need four friends, you needed four GBAs. Oh, okay. Yeah, and four GBA link cables to go into the GameCube so you could all sit down and play it because the minimap and stuff that you were meant to be right. working from was on the GBA screen. It was very early, like, Nintendo dealing with that stuff, but it beca- yeah. that became very exclusionary. <laughs> <sighs> Bloody Nintendo. Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, Octopath Traveler on now out on PC. Yeah. We knew it was coming. It just, it's out now. Cool. Yeah, I mean, like, the real... The, like, I think everyone's really waiting for that to hit the other consoles, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, if they will. Surprised they will. I'm surprised. I'm surprised they didn't announce that if that was a plan that they had. Yeah. Like, so I I think PS4 people should I probably know. start. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'd be, I'd be surprised if it came out on PS4 at this point, to be yeah. honest. I think it's a Nintendo-centric thing. They just allowed them to release it on PC as well, probably. But Microsoft, again. Yeah, I guess so. It's this, this, yeah. new, this new thing. Out on Xbox, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Um, Last Remnant remaster. Do we already know about that? Boy, they, I mean, maybe not for the Switch, but they have just released it on okay. PlayStation 4. So. Yeah, it said available now on Switch as well. Yeah. Or available I mean, like, that it's a very rough early, like, do you remember how, like, early, like, 360 PS, uh, PS3 era, those, how those JRPGs were? And they got, like, quite a lot of trash. Yeah. About them, like, Enchanted Arms, White Knight Chronicles, Last Raymond to me always felt like it was in that gambit right. i mean i might be wrong like i i never played it like i i feel like i dodged the bullet i played lost odyssey and that was pretty good okay um but those <clears throat> but there was meant to be that like they would they found it that transition of jrpg with the like up level in tech they found that very difficult right oh, poor guys yeah oh well there's no on switch if you wanted to get play it um dragon quest builders 2 uh again like 12th of July, that's probably not a new announcement. I imagine that's just... Yeah, thing. no, that's been coming for a while. Um, Dragon Quest Eleven Complete Edition, it just says available this fall. So I don't know if that's any kind of update there. We knew it was coming. Yeah. They might not have attached a release to it. Uh, Square Enix Collective, which I guess is like their indie thing that they do, um, and they announced a game called Circuit Superstars. Could like a- you have devised a like, more build to less of a impact <laughs> yeah. like trailer for a thing it's like they're in like a car museum yeah they're like, like they're like shots stro- of little they're details like stroking like these old classy old cars like it's and like there's this like like building burgeoning music like going they keep on showing the like close-ups of like details of cars yeah. and stuff and you're like, and, like, oh, they're like and they're like but the thing is is when i say this it's gonna sound like a joke but it isn't and they were like you know and there's so many games that give you so many wide and brilliant opportunities with driving and how to do that and uh, and uh, model these cars in such lovingly painstaking ways and um, we're not doing any of that <laughs> but like it's dead straight yeah like if they'd have gone, we're not doing any of that. Changed it and like played some janky music, and I'd watch the cars go around. You know, yeah. like like super circuit <laughs> vibes. Like I, I probably have been warm to it, but they just then showed the game, kept the tone, and it's like a cartoon kind of top down isometric racer, like you would have yeah, got on like the Mega a Drive. Machine yeah, sort of like so, yeah, yeah. So I'd like, I mean, like the one that I think the one that it reminds me the most of was like Super Skid Marks. So that was like a okay. Mega Drive game, and that was cool because you got you could one of the unlockable cars was a cow with giant wheels on it. <laughs> and it came in different colors. It was very good. You could do okay. all, all cow race. Okay. Talk to Wayne about it. He, right, he knows about will, the old cow race. Next time I see him, I'll ask, I'll ask him about cows. Wayne, tell me about the cows. <laughs> You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, they said something about a uh, battalion 1944. Eastern Front, which is 
apparently it just says out now on PC. I think that was part of the reel of stuff that had already come out. So that might have just been reminding you that it exists. Yeah. It's been a lot of that. Which is weird. Uh, yeah. It's just like, we've got nothing to show. We're just reminding you of games that are already here. Uh, Square Enix music finally being available on streaming services. I, I, I mean, like, because also that's a, that's also a reminder. You know, like they, okay. they actually, they, they soft released that like uh, a few months ago. <laughs> okay. Like that, so that like they did that and like, and but like, I don't, they haven't made a big fuss about it. Like, you know, not, I had, I'm, I have a dabble in a little bit with the Square community. Hmm. And so like when news like that happens, you know, like usually when there's a Square product, it ends up coming into my sphere i don't know when it's coming out but when it comes out <laughs> I like i know. generally find out about it and people will seem to be pretty excited about that yeah cool yeah good for good for all the fans that want that music um kingdom hearts 3 dlc remind with a really weird a really weird <laughs> a really weird trailer no voice acting no sound effects just music and some it's a hot mess in it like yeah. yeah like it's like i mean it was just being abstract in that way that's like it's like you know like it's that kingdom hearts thing of like do you not understand what any of this means do you not well like don't even bother which <laughs> like is like kingdom hearts way of operating i mean yeah. like i like kingdom hearts because you know final fantasy is cool and disney is also cool and that's fine yeah you know like um but you know i do think that the story is like ridiculous <laughs> you know um, but like you know i'm not you yeah. know pouring out anyone that think because it is a it is a labyrinthian <laughs> mess like people that have actually dedicated their lives to like kind of trying to pull those strings and sort that out like more power to them you know and i've played all of them like i think i've I've only not played like one kingdom hearts game and like i don't know what the fuck is going on <laughs> like half yeah, the time like i think i think like i was i was a big fan of one and two and then i just got lost amongst all of the random releases and haven't got back to the franchise but i don't know if that'll ever change but more dlc for the people who want more cool uh, Shadowbringers is an expansion for Final Fantasy fourteen online. Still going. People still fucking love it. Yeah, I mean, like, they earn it. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, like, like, I mean, you know, long may it continue for them, to be fair. Yeah. Like, I think, I mean, like, I mean, like, I have this other thing. I've got this, I mean, like, it doesn't really matter because actually they've kind of become like two separate units now. But like, as long as Final Fantasy, like, um, as long as kind of like Final Fantasy 15 no not 14 is going I don't have to worry about the next online game taking heat away from the like next Final Fantasy yeah. or like delaying releases or anything like that so like for me I'm like like happy as long as it's going on also like everyone that I've spoken to that plays that game like has had some sort of about facing turn on it where they've gone from being like I don't know if this is very good to like oh my god I'll see you never, you know, like that's the discourse around that game. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It does seem that you had. And it does definitely. look great. Like yeah. if I was going to play one, like it probably be would one. be that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> but if, <laughs> yeah, be that one. Yeah. So that expansion is out on the second of next month of July. Um, then we got a, a trailer for dying light Two, which I think was just made up of stuff we've already seen of stuff from last year. There was a little year. bit more action. There was, a, there was, yeah. Well, it was because we got already had a trailer for this somewhere in the Xbox one, didn't we? I think we've, we've had two already. We had one in PC <laughs> and one in the Xbox. Yeah. And now, it, and it was a slightly different one for Square Enix. But this, like for this trailer, there was still stuff in it that was like in the other trailers. Would even like clips from the first trailer that we saw. Oh, okay. When it was first revealed. So it's like not a lot of new stuff in that one, but it's another one just to remind you who it is. That's yeah, we're still here. It. Still, isn't here. that coming out in March next year with all the other games? <laughs> Probably. It just said spring. I mean, it's not so. gonna. It's not gonna stand up that game to like. You can't. You can't throw down with Final Fantasy with Final Fantasy Seven <laughs> and Cyberpunk. Yeah, they've got a like that's not. I mean, hopefully they're smart enough to keep it away from those games. But 
Yeah, we'll see. But that is this. spring, isn't it? That's going to be the spring next year, right? Like, like if you buy a fight... If April you buy May. Final Fantasy Seven and Cyberpunk, that's you set till Christmas, mate. Like, like <laughs> you know, like for like a you know, like for someone who's got a passing interest in the hobby, if you got those two games, that's that's I mean, it. Don't forget Legion's out. Like, yeah, I mean, I, like, well. I think Legion is the one that's going to be successful in mm. spite of these other games. But for Legion to be successful in spite of these other games. Like, someone else has even got to take more of a hit, and, like, that looks even worse off for Dying Light, mate. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it's because, unfortunately, we've been, like, Dying Light 1, they ended up releasing it at a bad time, or, like, a, I think there was something else big around the same time, but it's... Yeah, you know. and I mean, like, at, like Dying Light's okay. Mm. Like, its systems are good. Like, its story is crap. You know, like, and, like, nice. not really... You know, there's not really much happening yeah. there. It's very yeah. by the mon- numbers and like running a mill. Um, but I'm that, but I guess my hope for Dying Light Two is that it like you know takes all of that good stuff and then adds a good narrative on top of it. Hopefully, I mean, obviously with the Chris right, Avalon. yeah, Chris Avalon writing it or at least being heavily involved in the narrative. Yeah. So we'll see what. Well, let's see how much time he's it. given that scene as he got the Bloodlines gig. Eh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. like that's that's like shut the front door, drop everything, gig. <laughs> you know, for anyone who writes video games. Well, I mean, he wasn't at E3 this year for yeah. this one, so <laughs> see what happens for that. Um, yeah. So next we had uh, Romancing Saga Three and uh, Saga Scarlet Grace Ambitions, both coming soon. Which is really cool. Like, so are they games that haven't been released in the West. Yeah, uh, or... yeah I think so. Um, yeah, like the. They released Romancing Saga 2 on, uh, like, maybe like this time last year, maybe. Okay. Um, and they're games that are like, they're really weird experimental Super Nintendo JRPGs. Like, they don't, they don't conform to, like, the normal rules. They're, um, they're a very interesting take on, like, a open world. You know, it's about like getting information and following through on the information and finding, you know, like, and like, it's kind of like meta textual stuff. So it's got like kind of like Romancing Saga 3 has a kind of, you know, building up, you're a general of our army and you're kind of building the army. And then like, but you can get to a certain point where, you know, you like, you know, you pass on your traits to your progeny you know and like it, and it keeps like kind of continuing but the st- overarching story of the villain like you know continues on it's very interesting stuff yeah. but like they're notoriously fucking hard and like notoriously <laughs> fucking <Okay>. inscrutable <laughs> like that's like that's like the romancing saga thing but if you if you're into that they're like perfect and if you're like into your history you know like they're such a fascinating other way <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, yeah, it actually sounds more interesting than they made it sound. So on the what they showed, but yeah, I know. I guess like, they didn't really tell like, us the about thing the is, game. Is I was like, when they because the thing is, I like Romancing Saga, like the Saga games in general, particularly over here, you know, in Europe, have had fucking no shakes. Mm. Like I had to get a copied version of Saga Frontier on the PS1 because they wouldn't release it in this country. Like they didn't want to release it in the States, but Final Fantasy VII had been so successful that it was like the next thing that was up. So they were like, get it out. You know, I had a, I had a bout with unlimited Saga. I, I remember I went into a game and I went to buy a Legacy of Kane Defiance and there was this beautiful new Squaresoft game in a cardboard box, like unlimited Saga. I bought that like, my God, that game... Dis- like destroyed me with systems upon systems and it's really okay. boring and <laughs> I really want to play it again but I sold it like I really want to like add, you know I want to adult the shit out of that game because it like still bugs me na- like to now but like that's all the saga you've really been able to have in this country so when those saga games the early ones were announced like you know I had to hit the research to figure out what was going on with them man. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah well for everyone wanting to play these ones they'll be available Soon, in air quotes, but yeah, that's coming. Um, next one War of the Visions, uh, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, which is a Final Fantasy mobile game series. Yeah, like I'm always since Final Fantasy, all the bravest, 
I, I've always, I've given Square a wide berth. <laughs> with their mobile with stuff. With their mobile stuff, okay. yeah. Like, I think there is, uh, there is quite, there are some people that are very into Brave Exvius. Okay. Like, I just like, I like don't understand it. It's like there's, there are, so I love Squaresoft games. I love Final Fantasy there are two branches of this this tree that I do not understand in the slightest. One of them is Brave Exvius, and like the other one is Dissidia. I, okay. I don't understand them. Yeah. yeah, like that doesn't mean like I mean like I I can't talk on them in any way, shape, or or form. But like I understand that they've both got huge cult followings. Yeah, yeah, no, but the, and they both have that mega mashup thing going on. I know Brave because I know that. I know that Tidus was um, in, like from Final Fantasy X, was in Brave mm. Exodus, the okay. first one. So, oh, people will kill me for that. Tidus, I believe it's been put. Oh, no, Alan. Who cares? They, Alan, they <laughs> care so much. <laughs> well, if you care that much, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, after that, we got uh, People Can Fly's new game. So, the Bulletstorm devs have announced Outriders for next year. A one to three player co op game. Yeah, generic the generic shooter is what it looks like. Yeah, I couldn't. They, I mean, they didn't really show anything. They even ended. Up, they showed a cutscene and they showed a bit of the same cutscene twice. Yeah, and some concept art. Okay, and the concept art was important. Yeah, it's very but important to get. Wouldn't that have like a little dev diary with it as well? Yeah, that's where yeah. that's where I saw the concept art in the background. <laughs> Of the dev diary. Right. Yeah, I was like, oh, there's some concept art. And yeah. I was like, trying... You know, that's the thing. When you're not showing footage and you're showing people working on a video game, I'm I sp- I'm never listening to the person that's talking. I'm always trying to like look at the monitor and like, being like what the fuck is this game? Yeah, you know? they showed some spinning guns and some monster animations. And they're like, cool. Yeah, I mean... What I does like, the game look like? I like both of their games. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I think... What was their other one then? I know Bulletstorm. What was uh, the... Gears of War Judgment. Oh, okay. Like, I love that game. Like, it's like kind of i think it's like the most interesting of the gears of war games because of how it plays yeah you know like and they've they've both got this kind of like score mechanics and they've got this arcadey feel which they somehow make work with like within the story of gears of war it's very weird but like very cool interesting um and yeah like i like both those games you know and i'm excited for it and but the thing is they haven't done anything yeah yeah, the no. weird thing, because they were talking about that they've expanded shitloads, so they've got like studios all over, all over the gaff now. Yeah, and that are all working on this one game. Yeah, so. which like when? I mean, did they did they give a date for this? Just next year. Next year, okay. So launch titles, possibly. I guess next gen thing, like yeah. stuff that's sort of saying ambiently next year. We can stick a little flag in and say like potential launch yeah. title. Potential, yeah. You know, because because also you know we all, there's always that that question that you have to ask yourself part way through development, you know, in this late stage. Whereas, like, do we pivot the project around next gen? Yeah, and I come out as you're saying, like any bunch of stuff is just probably planning for the future. Anything that we didn't get a release date for at all is probably next gen. Yeah, and stuff that there. we thought we knew about that now was disappeared. It's probably pivoted. Yeah, and I and like yeah. that's the and like that's kind of. I, but like, that's the thing. It it makes these E3s kind of dry, didn't it? You know, those late game E3s, <laughs> yeah. you know, where everyone's playing everything so close to their chest. Like, oh, That's a good thing. I mean, again, we've said, we've said it before, Sony not doing this year, probably a good move. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just showing well, you can't same. play it closer to your chest than that, can you? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, next one, uh, Only Naki, coming out on the 22nd of August this year. Was that a new announcement? <laughs> I've heard like I've I've known it's coming out mm. from before this. Okay. It looks like like kind of cute that like dungeon crawly hack and slash. Like I don't know if it is. It feels like an RPG factory game. It, like okay. it's got the art style of like an RPG factory yeah. game, but I don't think it is. But Square have been doing quite a lot of work at like creating this real like um, baseline of much more classic. RPGs hmm. like Octopath Traveler is like the high flyer, you know, the kind of one that like breaks out of that subgenre. But like, there was like, there was like I Am Setsuna, um, Light and Lost Fear that have kind of been 
boiling away like background mm. in the kind of hardcore JRPG community. Yeah. Um, like I am like p- people seem to be very fond of I am Setsuna, not so much Lost Fear, but um, yeah, it, it looks like something that's cut from at least the same vein as that. Yeah, fair enough. And then we got an announcement. I think there's been a long time coming that has been, been talked about for ages. And I think we've talked about it a lot about why this isn't here. Finally, a remaster of Final Fantasy VIII yep. after being held back. Like, we've had all of these sort of like, oh, look at all of the Final Fantasy games that come into Switch, except for eight. Yeah, and I'm really excited. Yeah, they finally had a word with whoever owned that piece of music. Yeah. Eyes on me is no longer a bane yeah. on our existence. Unless they cut it from the game, which would be weird. Hopefully they haven't done that. I It kind of can't. It's the emotional hook of the right. game. Like it's like it's really it's a repeated piece of music because it's a song that a character is involved in singing. Oh, okay. You know, like <laughs> to cut that out of the game would be like like I mean, that, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that would be weird. Um, but <laughs> it would we'll definitely see. Be very jarring. We'll see. Like I mean, they didn't play any of Eyes on Me in the trailer, so I don't know. Who knows? Keep ears out for that one. <laughs> um, but. I think, yeah, like, I mean, since they started remastering, I mean, you know this, since they started remastering these games, I was like, I want Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. Like, since they said, we're going to remaster Final Fantasy VII, I was like, I want to play Final Fantasy VIII again. It's like, oh, we remastered Final Fantasy IX. Where's my Final Fantasy VIII? <laughs> and ten. <laughs> can I tell you what? Can I tell you why? It's such a, such, I'm like, because, you know, we're talking about Squaresoft today. I'm such on my fucking personals about it, right? <laughs> but like, oh my God, I lent my copy of Final Fantasy VIII to a kid called Adam in year 10, right? Gave it back without my first disc. Fuck you, Adam. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. (laughs) And like, and so like, like I haven't played it for that long. <laughs> like, damn. Yeah. So like, I'm and because I've replayed loads of the Final Fantasies, it's just I, and that like, one. I I like I like my my kind of current time period was like I don't like Final Fantasy eight, and like I think I might be wrong mm. because like everything that I've done to kind of engage with it, you know, like every video that I've watched about it has brought back like fond memories, and like I think like I do. I've always thought it like maybe is like Nobuo Uematsu's best soundtrack and that's like super controversial because it's never really heralded as that yeah. you know like people like the go-to is like Final Fantasy 7 Final Fantasy 6 like even Final Fantasy 9 for its soundtrack like Final Fantasy 8 is like just constantly overlooked but it's got like the best battle music the best world map music like everything's just like sad and like I love that yeah I mean to be honest all I really know about that game is Gun Swords and gun swords are pretty cool. Gun so. blades. Uh, gun, gun blades. Bl- <laughs> whatever. It's <laughs> late. <laughs> gun swords. They're swords. They got guns on them. That's that's how yeah. I know it. Gun swords. Um, and then the final thing to leave out this conference was our first proper look. I say proper look. Our first look at the new Avengers game, just titled Marvel's Avengers, coming out next year in another March game, 15th of March to ram out that time period. <laughs> and yeah, they're kind of, it's a it was a bit of a weird showing cause they had just like a bit of cut scene, something that apparently was definitely gameplay mixed in with the cut scenes that were there showing a few flashes, but they're not much else. Like I was kind of expecting a big blowout, like gameplay Walk demonstration. Through. Yeah. Yeah. But, here's 15 minutes of us playing the Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. I was expecting, like, here's a level. But, They've been hyping it, yeah. like, for ages. Like, the, the internet discourse around it has been constantly, like, you know, I, so many, like, game channels that I am have nothing to do with somehow keep hitting up my phone screen with, like, two minutes of video that's like, I think this thing's happening with the Avengers. The next day, the same channel. I think this thing's happening with Avengers. Then the next channel, you know, and I, I so, you know, I've just been going again. on this systemic block of these, like, one focus <laughs> channels on in, on YouTube that somehow I've got involved in their web with. I mean, have you bo- bumped into any of these no. things? <laughs> I mean, I must you probably... You love Marvel. How yeah. have you not? I must even talk about Marvel around my phone more than you do. And somehow it still doesn't... Yeah. It still doesn't happen to me. But yeah, like I... It's interesting even like the way that... 
We've had more information after the fact explaining more of what the deal is with this game, but when they presented it, I feel like they were a bit too vague with what was going on. So it sounds like there will be a main campaign that will just, that is single player, that will, it will just give you certain characters to play and you'll flip back and forth between different characters. Um, the main crux of the story being an event happens on a day, literally Avengers Day. Um, when they're having a big celebration, a day is really bad, isn't it? Yeah, it's terrible. Um, it's just is what day is it? A it's, day. It's a day. It's a day. What? What day? Tuesday. Um, but they one of my seven favorite days of the week. <laughs> yeah. But they, yeah. So that happens. Uh, supposedly, Captain America dies, which obviously no one believes, and then it skips to five years in the future. San Francisco is in ruins. And the Avengers have been outlawed, and it's sort of them coming back together. And the, so the crux of the story will be, well, I think, you just playing as those main five Avengers, which is uh, Cap, Hulk, Thor, Iron Man, and Black Widow, all voiced by the most famous voice actors around. Yeah. They've got an alumni yeah. together, like yeah. I mean, I guess they've got an Avengers of voice actors together yeah. to play the Avengers. So, but then. After that main campaign, there will be extra missions that you will play as any hero and there will be co-op. It's like one to four player co-op missions. And there'll be like an expanding roster of heroes that they'll initially have a bunch and then be added to via DLC and like new missions and new they locations. They said that stuff would be free. Though, yeah. Right? So they, I mean, they referred to, it was like characters and regions will be free. So I don't know if there's like an open world area to that or if it's I'm wondering if there's going to be a single player campaign and then it's just like Destiny where it's like you have open world areas and missions and stuff going on there yeah regions is a weird word isn't yeah. it yeah like that's very very odd um so this was like we're we're recording this one a little bit late mm. yeah the discourse See on the internet seems to be quite staunchly they done fuck this reveal. How do you feel about it as a Marvel fan? You're much more invested than I am. I kind of I think without extra information afterwards, I'd have said that. And okay. I, I still think that that reveal was bad. Like showing something that was very vague and not sure if it was actually gameplay, showing very little of it, talking about your post game release schedule before really talking Showing about what the game level, is like. yeah like it's that was a bit odd and you know like cool the dlc is going to be free but what does the main game look like we don't know yet and at least finding out afterwards that the shots we saw of gameplay was actually gameplay but the demo they show behind closed doors should have been shown and yeah. if it's less than a year away that it's released why should they be holding that back that should be ready enough for, yeah. to show off to the public rather than that like, fully rather than just in little snippets so like as i was saying like i was hoping for i was hoping for the avengers thing to be similar to the final fantasy thing yeah of like a proper demo talking about everything but it was just super vague and yeah yeah saying i mean they even there. attempted to bookend it in a way that would be interesting but it wasn't and they just and they just dropped the <laughs> it was ball like all right here's hank pym shrinking a giant tank cool <laughs> you know it's like I'd, it's like, all right, that's the thing that's going to happen. Hank Pym is in the game. Okay. But it, but it was weird really because they were much. like, here's a bit of Avengers. And it was like literally like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'll be like, here's a bit of Avengers. And it'd be like, it's all disconnected. Like yeah. it'd be like Bruce Banner talking to Tony Stark. And then it'd be like, and here's a bit, you know, it's just little, in a, it was like half a cutscene, you know, devoid of context. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm obviously still going to buy it, but like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it still did, was just like quite disappointing with that. Day there's, one game of the year, mate. <laughs> we'll see. Um, <laughs> but there's, there's a beta coming soon as well for like multiplayer stuff. So I'd be interested to check out that out more just out of curiosity of what the fuck is going on than yeah, anything like, else. It's really weird. Like um, Square Enix have obviously, you know, like within this like release lineups that we've seen across these particular 
you know, conferences. Square Enix have got their hearts set on crushing much in spite of all of the other games that are coming out. I mean, they're, they're, that's themselves, though. It's yeah, like they were. Oh, two well, the- let's crush ourselves and everybody else. So, I mean, they've they've literally got two of their biggest games, or not even two of their biggest, their two biggest games yeah, and in like years to, and like to kind of are be- out within a week of each yeah, other. Yeah, and to kind of think to yourself that there isn't a crossover of people that like Marvel and Final Fantasy, like, is insane. Yeah. Like, it's like, you know, like, they are like two things that people that are outside the culture, you know, if you said, oh, you know, what do the geeks like? They'll probably say Marvel movies and Final Fantasy. They, yeah. like, people know what they are, you know? Yeah. Like, and to release them in the, in what, spitting distance of each other, like, it's just stupid. I, I don't, I don't understand it, but... It's... I mean, I'd say that they were trying to, like, dampen Eidos Montreal's sales so that they could buy the company, but they already own it! <laughs> well, it's not even, but they own Crystal Dynamics. Oh, is it Crystal Dynamics? Well, both. No, because I get confused because what happened is they keep changing which one of these is working on which... Cause... It's because it's both of them are working on it. Okay, so but, like... but Crystal Dynamics were making Shadows of the Tomb Raider and, and they were they... quite good at that. And then what they did is they put the team that makes Deus Ex on to making Shadows of the Tomb Raider and they make Deus Ex games and then Shadows of the Tomb Raider wasn't very good because they didn't understand yeah. what to do. And then, so I assume that when they finished that, they then just moved Eidos Montreal over to the Avengers and now it's all they, hands on deck, right? Yeah, they listed, when they were doing the demonstration, they listed like five studios that were working on this. So it's obviously all hands on deck. I mean, deck. I know you like Avengers, Alan, but fucking no Tomb Raider or Deus Ex is not worth a, what quite might what might be a relatively middling Avengers <laughs> game. Yeah, I'd be surprised. Like, I'll be very cross. Long. Unless you come back and say, this is literally the greatest game of all time. <laughs> I will be like, it wasn't you, worth it. you cost me Deus Ex. <laughs> I cost you Deus Ex. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, like, you're, you're, you're my, my like, you're, you have become my internet straw man. <laughs> of every fandom. Yeah, every, everyone that took a passing glance at Marvel at any point, myself included. I hate all of them. <laughs> Uh, but yeah so that I mean it's coming in a round year one thing as well with the Avengers I didn't like any of their faces I thought their character models looked a bit weird like their yeah. heads looked a bit too small for their bodies but their hair was the right size for their bodies yeah I mean like weird that's, I think that's really, cause it's like I like all of the characters but that's the thing I still haven't seen a com- like a contemporary Marvel character that I like like the look of you know, I like all of the characters, the one, the way they look in Marvel Spider-Man, apart from Peter Parker, who I think looks like a weirdly hairy Kendall. <laughs> like, you know, and like, and these ones are, were kind of the same. Like, it was like, I mean, like, you know, I don't know what was going on with Tony Stark. Like, he looked more, they like, look halfway between what I imagined Tony Stark to look like and the wizard. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I I think it probably would have been better to just make them look like the voice actors that were playing them, and maybe like make them look slightly like the characters there. You know, like twist it slightly to make them look more like their actual characters were. But it's weird that there's like part of the discourse with this is people complaining that they don't look like the MCU actors, that oh, it doesn't look like Robert Downey Jr. Oh, and Chris stu- Evans. That's yeah. a really, really, really stupid complaint. Do you think? Like, that's, like, like the amount of money that that would cost is, like, fucking insane <laughs> money. Like, and Square Enix, like, you know, they, they're always complaining that their games don't make enough money. So to think <laughs> that Square Enix have that kind of cash lying around. That, yeah. Like, Square Enix have got cash enough, right, to pay for, like an Avengers game and Final Fantasy VII to come out in within a week of each but, other. But they don't have Robert Downey <laughs> like box just like lying right. about. Like that isn't a thing. Yeah. Who I, does? Apart but, from Disney and the MCU. Yeah, I mean I guess Disney might be co funding this. I'm assuming they are. Yeah, well, maybe. That, but not not that amount not, of money co funding. And also like I think it's really healthy for the video games to exist within their own yeah. 
like thing because i think marvel spider-man really really excels at like being like a great contained graphic novel yeah you know it's like oh here's a really good spider-man story like do you want to check that out like and you can just and you can do that thing that you do with you know like dc comics which is just like file it in your brain into somewhere in your canon of it you know yeah and like that's cool and like marvel should do that you know, with games, because yeah. games are so much more transitory and they also don't need to be part of something so hu- huge and sprawling like the like, like the MCU. I mean, there are like, there's talk of people hoping that Spider-Man does cross over, but with this, but I don't, I, I don't See, think it will. I think that problem- overcomplicate it too Yeah, much. and also there's problems with like graphics and engines and like differences there. Cause the- well, even if they just vaguely set them in the same universe. Yeah might work but actually having a crossover might be weird but also the fact that laura bailey voices a character in each of those games oh yeah so that'd be a bit yeah. she's playing two different redheads in yep. those franchises so that's might confuse things a bit but yeah i think also like the five year time jump might end up i don't know how that would sync up the two so what was but, your feeling at the end of Square Enix. Uh, two interesting things and a lot of stuff in the middle that I didn't care about, yeah. to be honest. Like, it's Final Fantasy interested me. And, I, I mean, I, I stayed up to watch this. So I got home at the point that it was starting, which was like two in the morning. Two. And, yeah, like, started watching. It's like, oh, cool. Like, the Final Fantasy stuff looks cool. And then just sort of waiting in the middle half asleep trying to make notes of what was going on while I was staying awake. I mean, like, I just... Yeah, bless you I've for just doing that, Stay up awake. for... I've just got to stay up for Avengers and it will be great and it will be worth it. <laughs> but it's also and like, then it wasn't. And, <laughs> and I know it's the end. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, as soon as they open with Final Fantasy, you're like, okay, Avengers is at the end. Yeah. <laughs> you just know. And, but yeah, it was like... But that I think that's even why it felt more disappointing with what they showed because it was like, I stayed up for this. <laughs> I should have just gone to sleep. I've yeah, you, so do you reckon lead with Avengers if you got nothing? End of one, yeah. Fantasy. Yeah, like that should have been flipped with how much of each that they had. Yeah, like because that would have been far less disappointing in that way. Yeah, and like you need to end on something that's actually got impact and is something that feels worth waiting for. Which I don't think any of these conferences. Have yeah, really I had. mean, like I'd say that like Microsoft tried the hardest to do that yeah like like the halo reveal was a thing yeah like right, right. but, the halo but no yeah but like but no like, one no one cares it still was you know, that whole not like, master enough. chief with the you know like the kind of light up board in the background that just says applause <laughs> like it's like it's like that just doesn't like it doesn't work anymore like you can't just wheel him out yeah you know <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think what was that i mean doom eternal on the bethesda one but that was even like that was half-heartedly delivered as well. Yeah, because we, they're probably just very tired and trying to finish making <laughs> yeah. a video game. And yeah, like Hayden, I mean, yeah, Halo not really. Showing a kind of interesting cutscene that didn't really tell you much about the game other than this has probably been delayed. And is, isn't, isn't coming it, out on the Xbox One. <laughs> yeah. And then what else was there? It's like... Oh yeah, Devol was like nothing. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, no, no, just absolutely yeah. nothing. I mean, you had some Baldur's Gate 3 on the PC one that we're not going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, no, let's not talk about that. Yeah, like no one, like that was literally probably the biggest thing to end on. Yeah. Out of the whole thing, but it still was disappointing, but... Oh well, any final thoughts from you? How do you feel about it all? All of it? But I, I don't know, like... I feel like we've, we've really done god's work sitting through this e3 like actually like i think we've done like a real a real service <laughs> like, um, what for square enix for square, you feel, for square feel enix that? i feel like i i'm really excited um i like wish they hadn't spoiled like uh life is strange yeah because that was really stupid of them um like don't show bits of your game that isn't finished you know, like major twists. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, like I'm into a lot of the like kind of smaller stuff that's, you know, yeah. in the middle. And like, I think that, uh, I don't know, like I'm really happy that the Mana Collection is coming out. Like that's yeah. really cool. Um, 
I'm really happy that like Romancing Saga is getting released, even though it's not for me. I'm just like always really happy to see like that stuff get preserved. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like that's really good. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, I guess I feel similarly to you. Like, I mean, I'm not as big on the Avengers, but I like, you know, someone who like isn't hugely Marvel, you know, but has a passing interest in it. Like there was nothing there for me. Yeah. You know, like they're like, I was just like, okay, what was the point of that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Final Fantasy VIII, I'm super excited about. Like, but again, you know, it's my preservational vibe. <laughs> yeah. You know? But yeah, so I think like all in all, it was one of the better ones actually for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it hit much more points, much more consistently. Like, I like, like, cause I mean, my highest high is probably Final Fantasy VII. Although like for me, in, in interest, like outsider shout, Watch Dogs has come pretty close. Yeah, you yeah, know, but like those are the, I would suggest, I would say that those are the only two moments <laughs> that were worth being awake for. And Keanu Reeves. Oh yeah, there was Keanu Reeves. Not the not the game he was there for about or anything else. Just the fact that yeah. Well, I mean, they Reeves. did nothing with the game that he was yeah. there to talk about. Oh, and um, John Burnfall's dog. Oh yeah, Bam Bam. Yeah, Bam Bam was a highlight. Yeah, good dog, Bam Bam. Very good dog. <laughs> so. I think that's it for our, our E3 coverage this year. Um, if you're watching this before, then we actually should have another podcast for a proper episode of the Taste My Game Face podcast, where we'll probably just go over highlights and people's favourite stuff with a couple of other members of the team. But if you enjoyed this and the other stuff, check that out and maybe head over to tastemygameface.com. You can go to our little contact section and head over to our Discord, maybe our Twitter or Facebook and contact us that way. Share with your friends, like, press the thumbs up and the like button on the things if you liked it. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube because that's always nice. Find us on any podcatcher of choice for any of our episodes that we put up. And yeah, I hope you have a lovely day after watching this. I've been Alan Heath. <laughs> I've been Joe Knight. And thanks all for joining us. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>